now open the SDK City Council meeting. Um, if I could have the Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll take uh, Katie Dinsmar's flag right there. It's nice and bright and big. It's perfect. So if you'll please join me, I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, uh, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Okay, we will now have roll call, Sadie. Councillor Dunsmuir? Here. Councillor Gates? Councillor Hall? Councillor Spangler? I believe he's there. Councillor Spangler? Casey, you're muted. Casey? <laughs> Well, I'll continue. Councilor okay. Tenbush? Here. Mayor Drinkwine? Here, thank you. Okay, we're at the first citizen and community group comment and we have uh, Chief Carlton with us from the Clackamas Fire District and he will uh, give us a small presentation. Great, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, we did have one PowerPoint slide we sent over. Are we able to bring that up? Um, no, but they, they received it in their packet. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Hold on. Can we continue? Casey's not on here. We don't have a quorum. Okay, hang on. Let me... Um, did he move? Okay, give me one second. Okay, I've asked Justin to call in. Um, we might be able to continue with just the presentation portion if there's no discussion. Okay. But let me see if Casey's gonna pop back on. Looks like Denise is talking to somebody. Casey's having internet issues. Justin's gonna get on. Okay. So Casey's gonna dial in, so can we continue with the presentation? Yeah, I think we can get okay. All right. Do you, All right. My, do you want me to share my screen? I have the presentation. Sure. Yeah, go ahead and put that up and uh, he can kind of relate to that. Sure, that'd be great. We're flexible with Zoom. We know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Our lives according to Zoom. Well, that's right. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm not going to say the new normal. That's right. <laughs> so if we can scroll down just a little bit, if possible. All right, perfect, right there. So uh, again, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, thank you for allowing uh, Clackamas Fire a few minutes this evening to uh, just bring you a fire district update. I think the last time we saw you was the 1st of January in person and really since then we haven't had an opportunity to have any in-person engagements so Zoom will have to do. So uh, thank you for a little bit of latitude. Uh, just four points that I wanted to talk about and certainly happy to answer any questions. Uh, the first is the contract for service and we talked about this back in January. Uh, this is an 18 month agreement, intergovernmental agreement that Clackamas Fire and Estacada Fire District number 69 entered into. Uh, it began again on January 1st of 2020, and it's set to terminate June 30th of 2021. Uh, the focus within the contract is serving the community. I think that's something that we're all very uh, proud of is as uh, public safety officials being out and doing our very best to help uh, protect and serve the community. So starting in January, uh, we brought a few enhancements to Estacada Fire. One is we increased the number of uh, on-duty firefighters at the main station or station 330, which is just across 
from City Hall. So uh, we are proud to be able to uh, deploy additional firefighter paramedics into the community. And then just this last Thursday, we have now staffed the George Road uh, Community Fire Station four nights in a row with volunteer firefighters. So again, uh, our ability to deploy both career and volunteer firefighters certainly helps uh, with fire and EMS um, uh, responses within the city and the surrounding fire district. Legal integration. So part of the contract for service speaks to uh, a legal integration vote in the form of a merger, and that is set to take place November 3rd of 2020. Uh, why this is important to the city of Estacada uh, is because the fire districts need three resolutions to be passed uh, before we can uh, go before the voters within both fire districts to consider a merger. So we need Clackamas Fire District and Estacada Fire District both to approve a resolution uh, for the merger and we also need the city of Estacada. So under ORS, since Clackamas Fire does not currently uh, protect permanently the city of Estacada, we would be asking the city to uh, sign an authorizing resolution allowing that merger to go forward in uh, November of 2020. So tonight we just wanted to share a few updates from the district and then we've asked if we can come back at your next city council meeting this month and go a little more in detail about what that authorizing resolution is and then certainly answer any questions. Timing wise, we will be asking the Clackamas Fire Board on Monday, June 15th and the Estacada Fire Board on Thursday, June 18th to approve those resolutions. So by the time we come back and see the mayor and council, uh, we sh you should only be seeing us if we have two fire districts which have authorized uh, those resolutions so that we can move forward. And then public education. So we, we really feel that we do our best uh, communicating and our best outreach when we can do it face to face and certainly in these really trying times with COVID-19, we haven't been able to do that. So we will be launching more of a social media or online campaign to help inform and educate uh, voters and citizens within both fire districts as we go through uh, the summer and into the fall. A little bit about COVID-19. I know everyone is dealing with it. It's such a, such a tragic pandemic. Uh, this started in early March. Uh, we, just like uh, many public agencies, have been uh, closed or had to re redo our normal operations. Uh, it has not impacted our service delivery, but it certainly has impacted the way that we uh, meet and greet visitors. So all of our offices are still closed to the public. We are working hard though on a, a recovery and reintegration strategy so that we can open back up to the community, but certainly we're watching uh, as Clackamas County applies for phase two if they're able to do that and, and certainly the number of new cases for COVID. Throughout the entire pandemic, our number one priority is to protect the health and well-being of our personnel, both career and volunteer, and the communities we serve. So we're being very conscientious of how this is impacting our communities. And then just the last piece is community engagement. And uh, with COVID-19, we really had to um, stop attending a lot, uh, all, most if not all of the community events. And this is difficult for us because we love having fire station open houses. We love attending uh, parades and celebrations. But with COVID-19, we had to ensure, as I said, the health and well-being of all of our personnel. Well, we made an exception this last week and I was very proud to make that ex exception. And that was, we came out in the communities of Estacada and Oregon City, and we recognized our 2020 graduating seniors. What an incredible milestone in these young men and women's lives and Clackamas Fire wanted to be part of that. So we still used extreme caution and our physical distancing, but maybe you saw us out in Estacada just saying thank you and job well done, well done to the Estacada High uh, graduating seniors. So with that, I know you have a very busy agenda. I wanted to see if you had any questions for us before we look to come back and visit you in two weeks and talk more about the authorizing resolution. All right, do we have any questions for the chief? No. We wish to thank you immensely for being part of the graduation. You did a great job. Good, thank you. Um, I heard it was uh, exceptional, so we appreciate that. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing you around town and in our community, and we'll see you at our next meeting. Thanks. So thank you, thank and you thank all that came with you tonight to listen in. All right. Thank you. Enjoy your meeting.
Thank you. Okay. We are at the uh, consent agenda. So all of you have had a chance to read over the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to accept? I move to approve the consent agenda. Okay, can I get a second? I'll second. Okay, we're first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay, department and committee reports. Uh, I don't think we have anything from the sheriff's office tonight or do we have any updates? Have they talked to any of you? No, the just the report is in your packet. Okay, great. Um, it's a uh, committee and commission liaisons. Any of you had any conversations with anybody? No? Okay, uh, city manager's report. Um, yeah, so um, just an update on what's going on in the county with the COVID-19. Um, uh, the county EOC has um, let us know that it's going to be at least two to three weeks before they feel like we will meet the criteria to go into phase two. Um, phase two is not a lot different than phase one. It does allow restaurants and that type to stay open later. Um, and it does allow for larger groups. I think it's going to be um, uh, 250 outside and 50 inside or something, but they're still coming up with kind of, even though there are cities that are in it, I think they're going to see how they're doing with those. Uh, right now we don't meet two of the six criteria. So there's six criteria to get you into phase two. And so they're hoping we can meet that in the next couple weeks. Now um, the Oregon Health Authority is in charge of uh, releasing us on that phase two, right? From what right, I understand. The county the county applies and the Oregon Health Authority will be the one that, well, the governor will tell you when you are, but yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, so um, we, uh, through, um, since uh, February, we have not been sending out any late notices for water, for the utility bills. And so this month we are gonna send out um, a late notice, but we aren't going to charge. We aren't going to add the fee on it, but it's just kind of to prompt people to either um, start making payments or to at least call us and set up a payment plan. We have about 30 people with balances over 90 days right now. So it's about, oh, about $10,000 is what we have that, that far out. So, um, so on the 20, Fourth, I think it is, we'll send out a pink notice that's revised. It's not going to be the exact same wording and they won't be charged any fee. They'll just be aware that this is their amount past due and they'll have a date that we want them to either pay it or to call us to make arrangements. We really just want people calling in to make arrangements to start paying what they can because um, some of them are up to, you know, four to five hundred dollars right now. So uh, we we kind of want to get them get them going. Um, we're going to give them two weeks. Usually it's a five day, but we're going to give them two weeks because we wanted to wait till after July first because a lot of people get um, their social security or any payments they might get come on in on the first. So I think we're going to give them till the sixth of, Ju of July. And again, it's either to pay it or at least contact us to make arrangements. If they mm -hmm. don't do one of those two things, they will be turned off. But okay. we're hoping that they'll at least call us if they can't pay. We don't think all these people are gonna jump in and come in and pay three to $400, but we just want that call, that contact with them. Okay. Um, we're working on a reopening plan. Um, things are working very smoothly. We had court the other day. Um, we had the social distancing, we had our, we have our floor things down that shows where six feet apart is. We have our hand sanitizer and masks as you come in. Um, it went, it went fairly smooth. We are open by appointment. So we are still getting building permits. Um, uh, last, last week, Tracy had 20 building permits sitting on her desk. Wow. Their issue wow. or go through. So Building is still happening. People are still happening. And we have the plexiglass up in the, we're getting everything ready. So um, we don't see us reopening till later in the summer. 
Uh, we don't want to do anything till at least phase two, but we are working on our plan and how that will look when we do. Uh -huh. um, a couple projects, the Shafford project, they poured curbs today. It's just moving along very fast, so I'm excited about that. It seems to be going faster than the first part did. Uh, the bridge crossing, I don't know if anyone's been by, but the bridge is up. Yeah. Now they're working on connecting the sidewalks to the bridge and getting the rails up. So it's exciting to see that job get done too, especially um, it's nice now because there isn't the traffic that there was to do these things. So it's nice yeah. to get them done now. Um, that is about all I have for an update, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions for Denise Karen? Um, I had a question for Justin since he's on there. Okay. I know the last time you expressed that your uh, the community was suffering in some ways financially, and you were a little worried about that when we were going to reopen. Have you heard anything good since then? I mean, are we hearing good good comments out there? Are people expressing that they're happy that things are starting to move? I think so. Yeah, I've I've heard some good positive stuff. I think people are still nervous and uh, want to see it fully open, obviously. But yeah. uh, I've heard more positive lately. Good. Good. Thank good. you. Sir. All right, uh, moving right along, we are at the uh, public hearing part, so I will close the city council and open the public hearing for the city budget. Um, I will now ask uh, Budget Officer Kerry for a report. I think the first public hearing is for the state shared revenues. Is it state shared revenues or? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it right here. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, you wanna to speak to that then? Um, I, <laughs> uh, Sadie, do you have a, is there a staff report in here? There is a staff report. It, okay. This is just um, one of the requirements that we have to follow in order to receive that state shared revenue funding. Okay. And you guys, you did the first requirement was at the budget meeting last month. And then okay. now you just have to have this public hearing and allow people from the public to speak and then pass the resolution in order for us to receive those funds. Now, shall I come out of this public hearing and then we vote on it and go back in for the next one? It, it's under um, council business, the resolution. So you can just follow the steps through those um, public hearing for this okay. and then we'll move into the budget public hearing. Okay. Uh, are, there, are there any speaker requests? I don't see any there. Well, let me check because we've got several attendees on the call. So okay. let me allow them to speak real quick. And <clears throat> okay, so everybody's unmuted on my end. So if anybody in the audience wanted to speak on that, please let us know. And I don't Nobody? see a chat or anybody unmuting themselves. So I think we're good. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the council at all on this? No? Okay, I will now close the public hearing and reopen into the other one. Is that right? Yes. Reopened into the city budget public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Budget Officer Kerry for a report. Yep. yep. So again, my uh, budget uh, message has not changed, nor did the budget change with the um, the budget committee. Um, as you all know, this is a local government in Oregon has to adopt an annual budget that is adopted before June 30th of the year that starts July 1. Um, this budget was passed by the city budget committee that is made up of a number of citizens, the same number of, the, the, of your city council. So there's 14 members on the city budget committee. Um, they held their meeting on May 12th and they approved it as proposed so that you have an approved budget here. Um, the law allows council to increase estimated expenditures um, by up to 10% if you so feel like that after um, the couple of weeks. And I just, we've attached, I don't know if we, had, yeah, the budget is attached that shows the approved budget and we just uh, need a, we will pass that budget in a resolution at our next meeting. Um, we like we need time to develop the, the budget resolution just in case there's any changes. So tonight you'll pass um, the state shared revenue resolution, but you won't have the budget for the council till the next meeting. Okay. All right. So Thank I you. will take any questions if anyone has any from 
Any Remember speaker that? requests, Sadie? Sadie, would you ask them if they? Yeah, I don't. I don't see any unmuting themselves and okay. we haven't got a chat so I don't believe we have any from the okay. public. All right. Any uh, questions from council before we go out of this? No? Okay. I will now close the public hearing and reopen the city council and we will vote on the state shared revenues. So do I have a motion or we want to do roll call on that? Um, so the resolution 2009. Yeah down on council business. So yeah, we just need a motion in a second. And uh, Sadie, do you wanna? I can do roll call vote. Okay, okay. so do yeah. I have a motion? I'll make the motion approve. to approve resolution 2020-009. Okay. okay, and do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, all those in favor say aye or do you want a roll aye. call? Aye. Aye. We're all aye. Council. We're all aye. All right. And then you don't need one on the other one, is that right? We don't have another one tonight, right? It'll be okay. at your next meeting. All right, now we are at uh, Council Weaver's resignation and discussion. Um, he's given his resignation. I think he moved to a new location. I don't think it had anything to do with uh, council or his discontent or anything like that. Um, we will miss him. He's made great contributions to our, our council and, and we appreciate his service and uh, we hope that he finds his direction wherever he chooses to go. So we appreciate him and we thank him for that. Um, we are now at the declaration of emergency discussion. So I will hand that to you, Denise. Right, so, um, oh, does someone? I was gonna say, we didn't necessarily have much of a discussion about the Weaver resignation. Well, I didn't think there was too much to discuss, but if you wanna talk about well, it, we can talk about it. Well, I guess um, I wanted to go back to the discussion that we started right before the meeting. Did we decide to fill the vacancy with the appointee or are we going to let it ride until election season? I think we'll uh, fill the positions with appointees for that oh, six month do. period, just so they can get their feet wet if they choose to want to run for council. Okay. And then if they want to rerun when we go through okay. that, then we'll-, we'll I just wanted there. to double check that that was what was decided because um, I think that's a great idea. I think so so we too. will advertise and we'll try to get that in the next paper and do some advertisement and some outreach on our Facebook and our website. Okay. Awesome. All right. Any other questions to that? No? Okay. Uh, then we will move on to the declaration of emergency discussion that we were started. Denise? Yeah, so um, I gave you all the dates on, our, on the uh, staff report about what the county is doing. The county has declared an emergency until June 30th. The county is really the, um, as long as the county has declared an emergency, all the cities kind of fall under that umbrella. So it, you can still get your FEMA money and all that. But in talking to other cities, they continue to keep their um, state of emergency going, even though they re it really doesn't you know, have a lot of impacts. So um, you had originally set a state of emergency that would last a month and that, that and in that resolution, it allows me every two weeks to extend that, which is what I've been doing. So I just wanted to keep you updated that I plan on extending that tonight for another two weeks and at least probably until the county lifts theirs we will stay under a state of emergency. And, and one thing under a state of emergency, it allows staff to um, do certain things that they would, that in, in different ways than the, like they can approve different things maybe that they couldn't in a state of emergency. Since this state of emergency to me is, we really haven't had to do that. I would not like, um, do I don't think I would use those powers because we are having meetings. I would still bring to you guys what normally I would bring to you guys. So um, I don't think we're really taking advantage of some of those things, but I don't plan to. I, I, I don't see this emergency as being one that I've had to approve any big expenditures, for example, that were over my limit without coming to you guys. And I don't see that happening. So. It's basically to just be sure we can get any money that's thrown out there to help us with any expenses we have related to the emergency. Right. Does that benefit us at all? 
Well, pardon? I does that does that benefit businesses at all? So like local businesses that are within um, a that's I, called I, a I don't think so. I think it's I think as long as the county's under the state, of Umber, but we are getting, we think we're going to get some of this CARES money that they're going to give to smaller cities. And if we do, we're going to see if we could give some, some, um, some type of uh, money back to some of our businesses, if we can get that. that would be I awesome. think we'll find out. Uh, there's the state's still working on how they're going to distribute the money, but I think there's a chance we might get $50,000. So it'd be nice if we could give some $2,500 um, grants to yeah. businesses. Here. That was my next question. If we could do something as a city that would yeah. help. We will so certainly look at that. Hopefully that. by your next meeting, I'll know more. Good, good. Well, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so along those lines, Denise, I know that we just saved a lot of money between what was budgeted for a certain project and what was actually spent on that project. Is there any way to take some of that money that we've already saved earlier in the budget year and be able to apply that to a future program for yeah. the small businesses? Unfortunately, that that money was in street in a SBCs different, oh, and okay. you, it has to be general fund money. But yeah, that um, was we're perfect. working on we're working on coming up with some some money so some creative Good. ways awesome yeah. i like it. <laughs> well yeah. we appreciate that so thank Good. you on that You're welcome. um so any other discussion on this uh declaration of emergency no no okay moving on we are at the next citizen and community group comment do i have any city there in the audience um i don't see anybody chatting but I'll give them just a moment if they want to speak. Okay. And I don't see anybody. Nope. No. Okay. Moving right along, we are at the mayor, council reports and comments. I'll start off with Justin, since you're on there. I have nothing. Nothing? No, okay, I'm Jerry. Uh, I've got nothing either, but thank you guys for all your hard work, Sadie, Denise. Um, it's yeah, thank you guys. All right, Katie. I'll echo what he said. Thank you to the city staff. You guys are amazing. Thank you again. And on my part, uh, obviously staff is incredible. You guys are keeping the city going and we appreciate everything that you're doing and keeping us informed and keeping everybody safe. So we appreciate you and everything you do. I appreciate all you counselors for all that you do uh, on a daily basis and actually showing up for all these meetings so we can get these things done. Um, and I just want to thank the people of Estacada for keeping control of themselves and holding on to this thing. It's been a heck of a ride. Uh, it's a hard one. You never expect to deal with this in your lifetime and here it is. But we thank everybody for being a part of this and, and trying to get through this in one piece. So we appreciate all of you and have a lovely evening. So I will close the city council. Bye, guys. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.